Uh, Boxwood Hall is a mid-18th century house. It's important um, if you are an architect or decorative arts person because of the de de details we still have. Uh, it's important for historians because there have been some very famous feet on the floors here. George Washington, Alexander Hamilton. Uh, Hamilton actually lived here for about 10 months when he first came up from the islands to go to prep school here in Elizabeth. Washington was here. This was his last stop before New York and his inauguration a week later. And the Marquis de Lafayette stayed overnight as well. And while we can't prove it, we suspect Aaron Burr may have been at least a visitor since he was friends with the third owner, Jonathan Dayton. What did, um, what did Boswell Hall first look like? Uh, it was an 18-room mansion. The part that we're in now, which is what remains, would be what we would call two and a half stories, two floors and a, an attic, storage space, servants' quarters, whatever. And there were wings on either side. Uh, one wing was probably the major kitchen wing. Would have had a couple of rooms between the dining room and the kitchen to keep the noise and the smell and the dirt out of the dining room. The other wing, we're not sure. An educated guess is it might have been a business wing. Um, with a separate entrance so the business didn't interfere with the running of the household. You notice when you walk in that there's a center hall with rooms uh, and an exact number of the rooms, the doorways all line up. Um, the center hall was uh, a reception area at that time and then the rooms would have been used for dinners, for uh, entertaining, things like that. So that's the reason for the center hall. And the big wide front doorway is not to bring coffins through. <laughs> This we think was the master bedroom. It's got the nicest woodwork. It's got the only marble fireplace of the bedrooms. And this is the southwest corner of the house. When the house was restored, this room was given to the local Daughters of the American Revolution chapter as a meeting room. Their great, great, great granddads were in Washington's army. Now Lafayette did stay overnight, most likely in this room. It's the largest of the the rooms would have been set aside for guests because it's not the warmest like the master bedroom was. The bed is draped in white for Lafayette, in honor of Lafayette's visit because he liked being a soldier and uh, the white would have reminded him of his soldier tents. What would you say is the most monumental piece of history here? Um, wow, that's a dead heat depending on uh, because it's come out since the show Hamilton opened. Um, but I would say the biggest thing would be that George Washington really did eat lunch here. He did not sleep here. This area was much too dangerous during the American Revolution. He had to take a trip from Virginia. Correct? Yes, it took him a week to come up from Mount Vernon, Virginia. He was on his way to New York, which was the capital of the United States for his inauguration. Elias Boudinot, who owned the House at that time, was in Congress. And a committee was formed, three men from the Senate, five from the, the lower house, to form a committee to meet Washington and escort him the rest of the way into New York. And whether uh, Budno volunteered his house or they said, guess what, Elias, your house is the closest, we don't know, but this house was chosen. So uh, Washington came here, met with the committee. Uh, they seemed to have had a meal. And then they went down to Elizabeth Avenue, the street that parallels Jersey Street, because Jersey Street didn't go through, to the Elizabeth waterfront. And they took barges around Staten Island and around, around Bayonne to Lower Manhattan. How is that we're not sure, but we suspect that because A, it was not on the, on the main road, and B, that uh, the order may have gone out, you know, he, he works with our guys, he's gotten back some of our officers. But Budno was nervous because he was traveling a lot, so he moved his wife and daughter out to Basking Ridge to property out there for the duration of the war. It was lived in, too. Right. That helps. For different reasons. Some people are uh, curious about the decorative arts. I've had uh, in the past college decorative arts classes come. Uh, sometimes it's uh, younger people, high school and college, who are assigned the site. Uh, some people are interested in history. Uh, Elias Boudno has no direct descendants, but I've met collateral descendants of the family. They come to find out what, what's going on. Uh, also collateral descendants of the Daytons. I, I've met some of those. The house grows on you. 
you know, it's, it's a neat house. There's so many stories here. And I also feel that history is not just names and dates. I mean, that's our basic skills. That's how we start out to get our timelines. But fill in the blanks. You know, what were the people like? What, they, they were humans. Um, I had a fourth grader ask me why the Chopping Down the Cherry Tree story was written. And the only answer I could give him is that Parson Weems was trying to make George Washington like a superhero. But he wasn't a superhero. None of these people were superheroes. How did they deal with history is, is what happened to people, what people did or didn't do and what happened to them because of it, whether they're a nation or an individual. It's all about people.